Happy Sunday, Bridgepoint. Uh, welcome, whether you're at our Tyrone campus, our downtown campus, our Seminole campus, you're one of our Clearwater friends, welcome aboard. I'm your captain now, and today's gonna be a little bit different as we sail across the bay in this week three of our Navigating Deep Waters series. Uh, super big shout out to Mr. Harold, Captain Harold, I should say, Miss Trish, for allowing us to come aboard their, their sailboat for today's message. Uh, we've been working through a series in June, we called it Deep Waters. Deep Waters was the series that really allowed us to start doing some introspection and to, to acknowledge the work that Jesus, as God, wants to do in us. In fact, the June series big idea was this Deep Waters is, is intended to be the type of faith that's simple enough for a child, but strong enough for life. That's a big difference. Simple doesn't mean easy, of course, but it means an opportunity to begin a journey with Jesus where he does the work in and through us that produces a faith strong enough for life. The navigating deep waters part of this series here in July, it's kind of more like what we do with our faith. Both series based off of a book called Emotionally Healthy Spirituality by Peter Scazzaro. If you haven't read that book, I would highly encourage you to check it out. Really cool opportunity to explore what God wants to do in us, the transforming work uh, that completes us, the idea that we won't be spiritually all that we can be until we're, or unless we're emotionally healthy too. Today's gonna be a whole lot of fun. I'm glad that you're here. I think there's something really special that God wants to speak to us today. So let's get into it. So Jesus makes it pretty simple. He just says, he spells it out. What's most important about our faith? I'll read you exactly what he said. Matthew chapter 22, verse 37. And he, that was Jesus, and he said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love God with everything you've got and love people. Faith is that simple. Following Jesus, it's intended to be that simple. So then why do we often have a hard time loving people? I mean, Jesus made it really, really clear. Love God and from that place, love other people. But if you're anything like me, Sometimes it's hard to love unlovable people. I'm pretty good at loving lovable people or people that I can connect with, but what about the unlovable, one, unlovable folks? And, and did Jesus really mean we're supposed to like really love them when he said, love God, love your neighbor as yourself? Because surely there's some exceptions to that, right? What if that's the whole point? What if there's not supposed to be exceptions? What if it's, it's not supposed to be just loving that which is easy and allowing God to bless us as we go, as if it boiled down to that simplicity? It's kind of like a, a rookie captain with no sailing experience jumping in at the helm of a sailboat and just cruising through the bay. I don't have a clue what I'm doing and they still let me on the boat. <laughs> That's their mistake, right? But, but why does life become that difficult? And, and what does it mean about us if we have so many circumstances around us that make it hard to love others? Or what does it mean when the world becomes really unlovable? I mean, make no mistake, I don't have to convince you that sometimes our culture where we live right here in beautiful St. Petersburg, Florida, in the United States of America, in our little corner of the globe, it can become polarizing. Do you remember last year? Everybody has an opinion, and it's almost if you don't agree with their opinion, you have to attack the person that disagrees with you. Love those people too? What about people that differ from you politically? Aren't they supposed to be the enemy? What, are, what did Jesus mean with that type of scenario? What about the people that hurt us, insult us? What about the people that don't love us back? Like, love God and love people? That's a little more difficult. Maybe it's just me, but, but when I'm reading stuff like that and when I'm understanding that my simple call of following Jesus is to give him all that I've got and love him with all that I've got and then love others, sometimes I would be a lot more confident if he had said, love yourself with all you've got, with all your heart, with all your strength and with all your might, and then love God and others the same. 
Like I, I could get that. And quite honestly, the human nature is that's sort of the formula that we often operate with. But then life happens, right? The, the winds start to kick up and blow, the waves start moving us around, and thankfully today's a beautiful day and this rookie captain doesn't really have to combat any of that. But what about when we do in life? What about when, when our faith gets really, really stretched? What about like last, uh, the past couple weeks that we've talked about when life gets really hard? Then love God and love people? Like, is that enough at that point? Does it make the point? That's what I wanna to process today. And that's why I wanted to be out in the middle of the bay. That's why I wanted to feel the breeze flowing through my hair. That's why I wanted to feel the waves. Thankfully, it's a very calm day. But what about when life gets choppy, when the water's not this smooth and when the wind isn't as calm as it, in, as it is today? Because surely there's exceptions. Surely Jesus has some caveats to the simplicity of this faith and following him that can guide us in this moment. Because what gets really simple is, and we talked about this in the June series, all, all human beings, all people are made in the image of God, uniquely, purposefully, with God's fine touches on all of us. You know what's really easy for me? It's really easy for me to believe that I'm made in God's image. But you know what becomes a little more difficult? That when somebody else is difficult, when somebody else is not as lovable, it's also really easy for me to think, surely they're not made in God's image. But even in those moments, doesn't that reflect a little more about me than anything else? Wouldn't that reflect a little more about us than anything else? Because see, here's the tendency. We'll get on our sailboat of life, if you will. We'll be navigating these deep waters. We know that beneath this is all the things, are all the things that God wants to do in and through our lives. But when it comes to actually living, when it comes to navigating this thing, you know the tendency for us is just when the wind blows, we get frustrated by those circumstances or when the, the waves start to do wave type things, it's like, why? Why are we having this much trouble? Why are things this difficult? Why, why, if I have all this deep water faith, why is my boat rocking like this? Why am I getting tossed? Why am I getting blown? And why is that person so hard to love? Surely I'm not the only one, right? What happens in those moments with those circumstances? That's kind of what I wanted to process today. I want to talk today about aerodynamics. Everybody in the audience, I'm sure, at all the campuses is like, yes, I've been missing a good message on aerodynamics. Well, I'm not an expert. I can't go that deep with it. But here's the truth about being on a sailboat. This sailboat is massively influenced by the wind. That's the way it was made to be. This sailboat is influenced by the waves and the wake. It was purposed for that. But does that mean the sailboat, we just lose total control and are at the every whim of the direction that the life wants to blow or the waves want to wave? <laughs> what then? What, what are the circumstances then in moments like this? Do we just sort of live with what comes? Like we're, we're just a, a prisoner to the circumstance, we're a prisoner to the polarization, we're a prisoner to the difficult people and we lay down like doormats and just sort of go with it? Is that what Jesus means when he says love God and then love others as we love ourselves? That's why I wanted to be out here. That's why I wanted you to see this picture. That's why I wanted you to kind of be a part of these things with me. Here's what's really cool about the sailboat. Yes, the sailboat is influenced about things that happen above the water. It's influenced by the wind. It's influenced by the waves. But can I also give you a little uh, physics lesson? Sailboats also have a key piece that exists under the water. That's called a keel. Now, I'm not an expert, but I did verify it with a sailboat captain. And here's the beauty of what the keel is intended to do. As much as the wind is blowing and the waves begin to happen, that keel is underneath being the steadying force for the sailboat. So that as the captain guides the ship, 
so then goes the sailboat. It's not just at the whim of the wind. It's not just to be influenced by the waves, but that underneath the surface piece is what allows me at the helm to stay in full control of this sailboat. Doesn't mean it's not gonna be without its challenges. That doesn't mean that there won't be difficulties. It doesn't mean that when in the midst of the storm, I don't wanna be out here on a sailboat. But what that keel means is the keel underneath the water allows me to not be pushed on top of the water. The keel allows me to stay in control as I try to turn the boat and navigate it because the keel beneath the surface becomes the steadying piece in my life as captain of this boat that keeps me in control. And I wonder as we navigate deep waters, we've been processing about the faith that God offers us because of the sacrifice that Jesus made for us on the cross, that to turn from sin and self and put our faith in his atoning work for us, his sacrificial death and his resurrection from the grave, what if that's the piece that makes all of the sense to navigating deep waters in our lives? Maybe to put it another way, I wonder if the reason you see so many people so frequently getting tossed by whatever comes their way, feeling the stress and the anxiety and the tension of the polarized culture and the opinionated world that we live in, I wonder if the pressure and the anxiety that's created from just trying to keep up or trying to keep going or, or trying to figure out how to move through life, I wonder if that's simply a reflection that we're not allowing the steadying peace into the deep waters of faith in God to be what calms that, to be what guides us, to be what steadies us so that we're not tossed, blown, and riding the whims of the waves. What if that were true? Can you imagine what a disaster it would be if a massive gu gust of wind took me in a direction as a captain that I have no clue what's going on in this world? That would be bad. Can you imagine how terrible it would be if the waves got really choppy and I felt like I wasn't in control of this boat? That would be really bad and I'd feel really bad for Harold and Trish that let me be up here. But how often do we get to those places in our lives where the simple formula that Jesus gives us is I know I'm supposed to love God with all that I've got and from that place love others that I love myself, but when the wind kicks up and the waves get heavy, I wonder how often we get to, okay, I've gotta love me and I'll love God like I love other people. Well, suddenly we lose that keel power. We lose the even keel nature of what our faith is intended to be. Now, make no mistake about it, I'm not trying to pretend that a healthy keel in deep waters takes away difficult circumstances in life. Winds will still blow and waves will still come. But the keel, the faith, that, that connection of a deep water experience with Jesus, what if that's what the world's missing? What if that's the piece that causes us to miss out on the steadiness in life that Jesus intended for us? To not take away pain or not take away storms because this world is broken. The, the world's affected by sin. It's in me, it's in you, it's in all of us. This world, it, it, it's, it, sometimes it hurts. Sometimes it's hard. And, and even to be on a sunshiny day, sometimes some of you don't feel the sunshine in your life. And I wonder if it's in those moments that it's time to process, how well do I know God? Am I getting close to him? Am I, am I embracing that relationship with him? Am I allowing him to guide me? You see, I would submit to you that today's message is about the even keel. And here's what I mean by that. So Nicholas Copernicus, history time. It's not my favorite, I won't last long. But in the 1500s, Copernicus had the audacity 
to su suggest something about our world. The whole world was under the impression that the universe was really revolving around us. And do you know what he was audacious enough to suggest? He introduced a heliocentric idea, meaning he suggested that we were actually revolving around the sun and the sun was at the center. Turns out he was right. People didn't really care much for the thought at the time, but it's changed science because he was correct. Uh, the world, the universe isn't revolving around our earth. And I wonder if we're really, really honest about what it means to love God with all that we've got and from that place love others as we love ourselves. I wonder if the challenge of today's message, sailing through the bay and going through this journey together, I wonder if we need a centric revision for ourselves. That if the tendency is to sort of twist Jesus' words to say, we, we easily love ourselves with all we've got, and then we'll love God and love others like it. It's to really ask ourselves, do I really love God with all I've got? Do I revolve around his work in my life? Do I revolve around the sacrifice, the love and the grace that he displayed on the cross, that he victoriously rose from the tomb to provide for me? Or am I just trying to tack him on? Here's what I mean by that. I mentioned earlier, it's really easy for me to believe that I'm made in the image of God because look at me. But is it really easy for me to really see that everyone is made in the image of God? Am I really looking at them? Because you see, I think what Jesus was getting at, and I think what can really change the course for us as we navigate deep waters, as we live in the faith that is available to us through Jesus, is to make sure, and maybe today's the reminder that is my life built on Jesus, or am I just trying to build Jesus into my life? Because if I'm not built on Jesus, if that keel underneath the sailboat isn't being what steadies me, then no wonder I'm having trouble loving people well. You see, if, if I had to give you a big idea to, for today's message, it would be that to experience the deep water faith I'm longing for, I have to build my life on Jesus, not just add Jesus to my life. I have to make my faith with him at the center. He has to guide. He has to steady. He has to be the source that I turn to when life gets difficult. He has to be the strength that enables me to love others. Because doing that in and of my own strength, that's like a sailboat with no keel. That's like getting tossed and blown sideways sometimes by the waves, by the wind, by the circumstances of life. And that's, I wonder why, I wonder if that's why so many believers sometimes struggle to really live out their faith in the world because it's easy to stand in church and celebrate Jesus when things are going well. But what about Monday through Saturday? What about when the marriage is on the rocks? What about when kids are difficult? What about when there's tension at work? What about the relational issues and conflict? Are we still just as steady in those moments? Because that's the difficult part. Today, uh, I want you to be paying attention to some of our social media coming out after this message. There'll be a good guide to kind of rank yourself based off of Pete Scazzaro's book to see how emotionally healthy we are. Are we immature emotionally? Are we kind of in adolescence emotionally? Are we moving into teenagers or, or mature adults? Because there's expressions that'll be able to allow us to see how we fit in that. But can I just ask you this? How well are you doing at loving others as you love yourself. And if you start thinking about your week, if you start thinking about other relationships, if you start thinking about other circumstances and it looks a lot more like you're kind of getting blown around and tossed a little bit, then I want you to know today, I think Jesus might be the answer that your soul is searching for. Because to find that love in him to discover what it's like to be loved by him frees us to no longer need to, needing to view people as problems, 
but to view them as image bearers in God, just like we are. And when people don't become a problem, but instead they become part of God's purpose, man, that charts the course for some really smooth sailing. Easy all the time? No. Without wind and difficult circumstances? No. But it's that even keeled nature that will allow us to sail the course God made for you and I, to find our purpose in loving others and living it out to our fullest ability that nothing else in this world can offer. So one more time, can I ask you, why is it so hard to love difficult people sometimes? I don't think it's other people that are the problem. I wonder if this is the reminder that in order to go through life living the purpose we were made to, we need to do a little bit of better job at sailing with an even keel, that faith below the water, beneath the surface, that will steady our hand. Can I ask you something? Do you know Jesus? Do you know a steadiness in this world that this world can't offer? Do you know the source of peace that in the midst of often polarized times, we don't have to be defined, blown, tossed, or rage about that, but instead we remind ourselves that the even keel inside of us allows us to be loved by God and therefore frees us to love, not problems, but people as our purpose. One last time, will you hear what Jesus said in this passage? Matthew chapter, 20, uh, chapter 22, verse 37. And Jesus said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Today's invitation is to respond to the love of God that he has for you and allow it to propel you to love others. Can I pray with you really quickly? God, would you help us to see it, sense it, feel it, and live in it. Thank you, Jesus, for their work on the cross that allows us to be loved and to live love. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, so honest question. How many of you knew where the, ter the term even keel came from? Be honest, okay? Only a handful. You've all been educated. That's all free. You don't have to pay for that today. Okay, that's just bonus. Uh, I've, I've been longing for an opportunity uh, every time I get up to preach to you guys to be able to say, I'm the captain now. And that, that got accomplished. So this is a bucket list message for me to be able to give and one that I think is really, really important. As we've been talking about navigating deep waters, uh, one of the critical pieces, uh, I have two things and then I'll, I'll, I'll be done. We'll, we'll go into a response song, but, but two things you have to understand. I wonder as we look at culture, as we look at our world, uh, as we look at human beings that exist within it, I wonder if one of the key reasons that we see so many people that are just angry or often hurt or heavy hearted so often in this world it's because they don't know how desperately loved by God they are. And that's point number one after today's message that if you hear nothing else, I say, I'm totally down with that. But please hear this as unmistakable truth. You, you are loved by God not because we've earned it and not because we've deserved it and not because we do enough right things, but because God, in the way that he created you and in, in the image that he made you in his, he made you in such a way that there's nothing you and I can do to disqualify us from his love. And I think for far too many people in the room and online, we're trying to live from a place where we're trying to earn it. And that's not possible. It's not a thing but it's also not something we have to do because we are loved by God. Would you guys grab my clicker off the table, uh, right, right side stage? I wanna show, show you guys a few things. Th this conversation is kind of moot if we don't move forward embracing how much we're loved by God. 
and to doubt it or to question it, because I know there's some in the room and I know there's some online that would just say, man, there's no way that would be me. I just wanna remind you that we get to, in this, this day and age, we get to look back at the cross where an innocent man died. We get to look at his tomb, which remains empty to this day. And if ever we question how much we're loved by God, look back at that cross and look into that empty tomb and remind yourself that you have such worth and value that the God of the universe laid down his life that you and I might live. Do you know how much you're loved by God in spite of past, in spite of the mistakes, and in spite of the brokenness that exists within us? That's response number one to today's message. Do you know how much God loves you? The second response, and imagine how awful it would be to, to be the one giving this message and having to live in this for the past couple weeks. I wanna hold up kind of a mirror to all of us to look inside us. Uh, Pete, Peter Scazzaro in his book that we've been working through kind of identifies some levels of emotional maturity. And I wanna put those levels up. I also reference that they'll be on social media after the message. But just to sort of get a guide for you and for me about how emotionally mature we are. And here's why this matters. If we're trying to love people from the strength of our own ability, well, it's no wonder we're gonna have a hard time with that because we weren't even made to do that. But to love others from a place where we remind ourselves that as much as we are loved, so are they. We get to see people, not see problems, not see difficulties, not see projects, but see people, fellow image bearers of God. And here are some of those categories that I wanna put up. And I'm telling you right now, if I see elbows saying, see, that's you, you're missing it. I'm missing it. But instead of mirror to say, where am I on this journey? Here are the levels as, as Pete has kind of ranked them of the first category would be emotional infants, young in our emotional maturity. Some descriptors of emotional infants. They look for others to take care of them. They have great difficulty entering, entering into the world of others and they're driven by a need for instant gratification. In other words, are the vast majority of your problems caused by other people? Embrace the fact that you're loved by God. You don't have to earn that. Be loved by God. Maturing a little bit would be what Pete Scazzaro describes as emotional children. Emotional children are content and happy as long as they receive what they want. Ugh. They unravel quickly from stress, disappointments, and trials. Because in, 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 in the, the minds of, a, of this emotional level, it's attacking who we are. They complain, withdraw, manipulate, take revenge, become sarcastic when they don't get their way. Ugh. If you're questioning if that's you or not, um, bring me your social media account and let's walk through your recent posts. Yikes. Maturing a little bit more is what Pete refers to as emotional adolescence. And here's some of those descriptors. Emotional adolescents tend to be less defensive, living as if they've got nothing to lose and nothing to prove. They, they live threatened or alarmed by criticism. Again, and it feels like a constant attack instead of growth opportunities. They keep score of what they give so that they can ask for something in return. They tend to be critical or judgmental. Again, the temptation, don't go to say, oh, I know who that represents. I'm asking me and I'm asking you, is that us? And lastly, as Pete describes it, emotional adults, and those descriptors would be this, are able to ask for what they need, want, or prefer clearly, directly, and honestly to recognize, manage, or take responsibility for their own thoughts and feelings, or even to respect others without having to change them. And you know what frees a person to be able to live so confidently in their own skin and so confidently in their own personality and so confidently in who they are? Is to be reminded that who we are is exactly who God has made us to be. And he loves us there 
in that place, not when we wear a mask, not when we pretend, not when we act or put on a show, but when we can honestly go before God and say, God, here's who I am, the good, the bad, and the ugly, and here's who you've made me to be. Friends, today, that's the keel that I think is missing in far too many lives. And as believers, we ought to be known as some of the most even keel people to have ever lived. But that won't be possible as long as we're just trying to tack Jesus on to our lives. Because to experience the deep water faith we're longing for, we have to build our lives on Jesus, not just add Jesus to our lives. So again, today, can I ask you as I'm wrapping this up, do you know Jesus? Do you know his love for you? The depth of it? The riches of knowing that you don't have to be perfect. You don't have to have it all together. You don't have to have all the right answers, but instead you get to embrace a God who demonstrated it on the cross that you are loved completely. We're gonna sing a response song together. It's called King of My Heart. I love that the worship band picked this one. But one of the lyrics in it, and I just want you to hear the words, it says, let the king of my heart be the wind inside my sails, the anchor in the waves, oh, he is my song. Let the king of my heart be the fire inside my veins, the echo of my days, oh, he is my song. Do you know that Jesus? Listen, if you're in the room and you're struggling to feel loved, you're struggling to find a place, or you're looking at some of these descriptions and you're struggling to, to feel confident that you're the even keel person that faith in Jesus is intending to make you, I want you to know we have a prayer and care space available. Online as well, you click a link. If you're in the room and you want to talk with someone, Prayer and care is open. Out the doors to the right, balcony to the right and down the stairs, there's a group of people that would just love to pray with you to point you to Jesus for the rest of us. Is the king of our heart really the king? And is it Jesus? Or have we been working too hard just to try to add Jesus along on Sundays and other times when it's convenient? Would you pray with me really quickly? God, for a few moments, would you give us enough courage to talk to you to process in our hearts, our souls, to, to kind of take a read on where we are emotionally to understand Jesus. Are you the king of our hearts? God, are we embracing your love and from that place loving others? God, I think the world would change if we would get serious at tapping beneath the surface, the, the surface and you being the steadying force in our lives. So Jesus, would you meet with us? Would you allow us to sense your presence and your nearness? God, would you help us to understand your love? And God, would we respond to it? In Jesus' name we pray, amen.